Hello, I'm Carolyn from All Spice Abounds, and this is my very first floss tube video. I'm excited to share with you today a little bit about uh, what I've been stitching. Uh, so I have this blog called All Spice Abounds. I started it, I think, in 2011. Um, it has been very inactive lately. Um, I used to post a lot about um, my sewing, specifically garment sewing. Um, I was very active on that blog for many years, posting about my garment sewing. Um, I transitioned several years later into quilting. Yeah, really into quilting. Um, I was part of the Cambridge Modern Quilt Guild in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, so shout out to all my CMQG friends who may be watching. I miss you all so much. I wish I could hang out with you. I miss you and I'm sending you all my best wishes. Um, you can see some of my quilts uh, from that time period on the wall behind me. Uh, I then moved from Cambridge, Massachusetts to the Twin Cities here in Minnesota, which is where I currently am. I moved for work. Um, I kind of left my quilt guild, sadly. Um, but since I moved to Minnesota, I've been really into um, embroidery, um, all sorts of embroidery, um, including even some cross stitch. Um, so that's what I've been doing lately, and that is what I'm going to um, share with you a little bit today. Um, so as I've gotten more into embroidery, especially over the past year or so, um, I've been really enjoying, I've really enjoyed following um, embroiderers and cross stitchers on Instagram. And through Instagram, I discovered uh, this wonderful community called FlossTube. So I had never heard of this before, FlossTube, who knew? Now I know. Um, and I started watching FlossTube videos on YouTube where all of you um, have been sharing what you've been stitching and embroidering lately. And I just love it. It's so cool um, to see on video, like right to hear people talking in real life, in real life in quotes, um, to hear you talking about what you're, what you're working on and to see your projects and to just um, feel like I'm chit-chatting with uh, some like-minded stitchers. So I really enjoyed those videos. Um, that you've been putting out, others have been putting out, uh, and I thought I would just give it a try myself. Um, so you may see on my YouTube channel, silly to think that I even have a YouTube channel, but I do have one, um, that I do have some older videos um, talking about my garment sewing um, on my All Spice Abounds channel. Um, but this is the first kind of embroidery or stitching themed video I've made and also the first one I've made in about five years. So I'm going to call this floss tube number one. I may or may not make any additional floss tube videos. I have no idea. Um, I don't have a lot of free time uh, when I'm not stitching or crafting or sewing. I'm a university professor. I teach biology. So I'm a scientist and an educator. Um, I've been doing this job for two years since I moved to Minnesota, and it is the most challenging work I have ever done in my life by far. It is also the most rewarding work I have ever done in my life by far, which is all to say that this job has been keeping me extremely busy as I'm settling in and building up my lab and teaching and just trying to keep my head above water. So not a lot of time these days. I'll make this video today. Uh, I would love to make more videos in the future. I do not know if I will, um, but for today, let's see how it goes. Uh, so I've got a few things to share with you today. One um, finished project um, and one work in progress. Um, I've heard a few floss tubers call these whips. I'd never heard anyone say whip before. I don't think I've ever heard anyone pronounce this before. I, in my head, when I see W-I-P, I pronounce it in my head, W-I-P. So I'll say W-I-P, work in progress, but I have one of those and one finished project for you today. Um, so I'll start by saying that I, I got interested in embroidery, like I said, when I moved to Soda, when I moved to Minnesota, which is where I am now, um, mainly because right before I moved out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, I purchased this book at my former local bookstore, Porter Square Books in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which I highly recommend. I miss that bookstore so much. It was fantastic and right by my house, super convenient. Um, but I picked up this book with basically a gift card that I had to spend at this bookstore before I moved. So I bought this book like the day before I moved or something like that. And it really opened my mind to the um, possibilities of embroidery that I had never heard of before. 
So up until this point, two years ago, I had heard about cross stitch. Um, I have been, I tried cross stitch for the first time, probably when I was extremely young, I don't know, five years old or something. As soon as I could hold a needle and thread, I was probably cross stitching. Um, I had heard about needle points uh, using 10 stitches, excuse me, 10 stitches on a painted canvas or from a kit. Um, I had kind of outlined things using embroidery before, but that was basically the extent of my knowledge of embroidery until I got this book, which has blown my mind. Here is the book. Um, it is the Book of Embroidery by, there we go, Book of Embroidery, um, published by the Royal School of Needlework in the UK. Um, it's a very thick book. You can see it's a few hundred pages. Um, it is a great reference book. Um, there it is. It's extremely technical, which is exactly the kind of craft book that I like as a scientist. I like technical information. I like detailed information. And this book really delivers on that front. Um, it's actually a compilation of eight smaller books. I think they were all published independently by the RSM. But now they're all combined in this book. I'll actually show it to you again. Um, there are eight portions of the book, eight different types of embroidery that they describe. Um, cruel work, black work, white work, silk shading, stump work, bead embroidery, which is really cool, um, excuse me, canvas work, and gold work. All right, so they um, color code the book into different sections for each type of embroidery and just go into an enormous amount of detail on each one. In this book, there are things that I had never seen before in my life. Um, really just amazing example embroideries by professional embroiderers trained at this Royal School of Needlework. And like I said, my mind was blown. Wow, 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 wow. So I've been inspired to give these types of embroidery a try. Um, the one that caught my eye um, the most, I guess the one that intrigued me the most was black work. Black work. So here, I'm going to show you a page from this book. Um, kind of what, what one can do with black work embroidery. Now, I'm not saying I could do this, but people can, people more skilled than me. Um, but here are some examples, right, of what you can do with black work embroidery. This is all done on an even weave um, fabric, such as a linen, with mostly just black thread in different um, thicknesses and using different strands, right? So here's kind of an example of um, the technique section, kind of teaching you how to do the stitches, and then here are some examples, right, of what can be done. So in other words, whoa, okay. So I decided to give this a try, and the piece that I'm going to show you is nowhere near the skill level of those examples I just showed you, but is my first completed black work piece. It's my own design, um, and I'm pretty proud of how it came out. So here it is. Um, it's a few mushrooms. Um, so here you go. Hopefully you can see this. Um, so this is my first completed um, black work embroidery piece. Um, here, I'll show you the back of my embroidery. I always like to show the back. Um, full transparency, as I tell my students in my classes. Full disclosure, full transparency, no secrets. So there's the back. I'll show you the front again. Um, so this embroidery um, was done uh, by me on a 36 count even weave linen um, in ice blue. So it's just a pale blue color, all with black thread um, in different thicknesses. I use DMC black. Um, color 310. Um, in some areas I use one strand, in some of the darker areas I used two strands, and in the very lightest areas I actually used one strand of um, a sewing machine thread in black um, as the thinnest kind of lightest shade. So I have at least three different shades there. The one strand of machine thread, uh, one strand of DMC black floss, and then two strands of DMC black floss. Um, so that is what I did, right? Nothing like the example I showed you, but you can see that they I attempted to um, do some different um, areas of shading and there are multiple different stitches that I used in this piece. Um, I just kind of gave it a whirl and this is what I came up with. So it's my first completed piece um, and I'm excited to hang it up in my house. Um, now I chose the topic, the subject of mushrooms. 
um, because as part of my uh, research, scientific research at work, I actually study fungi. So mushrooms are a topic that um, just comes came naturally to me. So that's what I did. Um, okay, so the second project I'm going to show you um, is a WIP, work in progress, um, and it is a cross stitch. So backing up for a second, when I was working on that mushroom piece, I, um, I was using, like I said, my own design. I was choosing what stitches to fill in the different areas um, as I arrived at each area. And thus there were a lot of decisions to be made. Um, so there's a lot of thinking involved in that project. Now at work, I have to do a lot of thinking all the time and I'm constantly having to make important decisions all day long, uh, which is great in some ways. I like that autonomy in my work. But at the end of the day, sometimes my brain just hurts from making all these decisions. And sometimes I don't want to make any more decisions when I come home. Um, so that's kind of how I've been feeling lately. Um, and so I purchased a cross stitch pattern where all I have to do is exactly what the pattern tells me to do. And I don't have to make any decisions. And it's very relaxing. I can just zone out and work on this cross stitch project and not have to worry about thinking at all. I can just whoop, shut my brain off and not have to worry about a thing. So I've been really enjoying that lately. Um, so this uh, cross stitch pattern that I purchased is from um, an, an Etsy store called Velvet Pony Stitches. And I'll link to that in the description below. Um, her Instagram handle is at Pony Stitches, P-O-N-Y Stitches. Um, I believe she's in Russia. She makes these really cool modern cross stitch patterns um, that are mostly um, animals, which is a, a topic that I enjoy. I like uh, nature. I said I, I study fungi in the soil. Um, I like natural subjects. Uh, so she has mostly animals, but a few other things as well, some floral patterns. Um, and they're geometric. They have kind of these triangular shapes, um, which I thought was just cool, different, interesting. Um, and so I chose her geometric leopard pattern, leopard. Um, I chose the leopard of the other um, animal pattern she had because I thought the leopard was one of the most complicated ones. Um, and I like complicated, detailed projects. I like challenging projects. I like to push myself to learn something new. Um, so I chose this leopard. Um, I'm about halfway through it. And here's what I have so far. Um, so here you go. Here is my um, geometric leopard from Pony Stitches, a little over halfway completed. Um, so you can see kind of the triangular geometric pattern in there, kind of around here um, where the nose is, up at the top on the ear, um, and then the kind of the rest of the leopard, the eye, the spots, you lose a little bit of that geometric pattern because of the placement of the eye and spots. It's fine by me. Um, but I thought it was just a really cool, um, cool idea, a cool pattern. Um, this has taken me quite a while to stitch. Um, it's all cross stitch. Um, again, this is on 36 count linen. This is uh, white linen. And this is all done with DMC uh, threads. So just cotton floss, no frills. Um, I didn't have all the colors specified in the pattern. Uh, I actually had very few of them. Uh, so I've just been kind of blending my own and making substitutions based on the picture of the finished project that um, Velvet Pony Stitches had on her Etsy shop. Uh, so I've been making it up a little bit in terms of the colors, but otherwise just following her pattern and not thinking about anything, which has been great. Um, again, I'll show you the back of my work. Again, a full transparency. Here you go. So you can see um, how maybe uh, neat or not neat the back of my work is compared to yours. I have no idea. Um, I try to keep the back of my work pretty neat. I don't use knots in my embroidery. I try to weave in the ends through previous stitches. So just to try to keep it flat. Um, but anyway, that's where I am so far, about halfway through. And again, I've been really enjoying this project as a relaxing project where I don't have to think about a thing. Colors are all figured out at this point, including my substitutions. It's only one stitch, cross stitch. Pattern tells me what to do. It's been great. Um, so that's all I have uh, for you today. I showed you my black work mushroom and my um, cross stitch geometric leopard WIP. Um, like I said, I may or may not make more of these um, videos. Um, 
But regardless, I've been really enjoying watching other floss tube videos and again, just seeing what you've been working on and um, connecting to more of a, a crafty, stitchy community. It's been just really nice to um, have that as part of my um, spare time, something to enjoy. Um, so that's it for today. I hope you all are having a, a wonderful day, wonderful evening, wherever you are. Um, I hope you are all safe and well during this absolutely um, crazy time that we are living in. I'll just leave it at that for now. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. hope you're safe and well and that your families are safe and well. Um, and as always, happy stitching!